terrace houses, a ubiquitous part of the landscape in the UK, Australia in the city and other ex-colonial holdings of the British Empire. Today I'm going to show you how to build them. You'll need a collection of materials. I'm going to make basic greystone terraces as seen in Alpha Craft in my base. But you can do a whole lot of different variations. I'll show you some of those at the end. But th these are the basic materials that you'll need. Collection of building blocks, stairs, slabs, doors, roofing materials, bricks for chimneys, collection of different types of woods in planks, slabs and stairs, and then decorating materials for the inside and blocks for texturing the walls. Let's get started. I'm going to use three different types of block. I've got cobble, stone and andesite and I'm going to change those with each terrace. You can make them all the same all the way along or you can vary them. I found varying them makes it look a little bit nicer. So I'm going to make a row of six terraces. So we'll start with the first one. One block, leave a gap, one block, leave a gap. I'm going to do this. That's one terrace. Yes, it's five blocks wide. I'm going to do the next one and the third. And now coming back for the fourth, fifth and sixth, we're going to do the same order. That's the fronts of our terraces laid out. It really is that simple. Now we're going to make the end wall of the first terrace. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're going to take up the last three to a height of three. And the remaining seven are going to come up to a height of four. On these next two, we go up three more, leave a gap of one and take the remaining four up to a height of three. And then we just build a little triangular step for the end. Come down to the other end, to your end terrace. We're going to go ten again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The last three come up to a height of three. The next seven to a height of four. The front two get taken up three more. Leave a gap and place one. Leave a gap and place one. And bring all these up to a height of three. And again, a little stepped gable at the end. That's the end of our terraces done. Now we've just got to work on the rest of the shell. So we'll start with this one at the end. I'll make one and then we can just repeat that for all the others. So one, two, three. Bring this across. So you've got five across the front. One, two, three, four, five. The middle one comes up three and the end one comes up three. Now we just repeat that with all the others. There we are, that's the front of the terrace is done. This is really easy. We're going to go around the back now. These bits at the back, the little laundry areas of the terraces need a little bit of thinking so we'll do the rest of the back first. So on this back one we're going to go, this is one, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to take our next colour, one, two, three, four, five. The material for our third house and keep doing that all the way down. And now we're going to mirror what's at the front. So leave a gap of one and one, two, three, gap of one, one, two, three. That's the upper floors done. Let's do the downstairs and the laundries. So we're coming to our very end. This back wall, leave a gap of one, one, two, and two more. So we've got a wall of three and a wall of two. Bring that up to a height of three. Now this bit of wall, we bring all the way down to the ground. The next wall we bring down to the ground and then one, two, three, bring that out to three, bring it out to a wall of two, miss a gap, 
and one, two, three. So we've made two little laundries that are mirror images of each other. We're going to do that again. So andesite this time to match this house. Leave a gap of one, one, two, one, two, three. And bring this wall all the way down to the ground. Keep doing that for the last three houses. Remember to make the mirror images of each other. And yes, there's a double wall here. That's fine. So your terraces should look like this. That's all our external walls finished. We're going to pop the roof on. I'm using nether brick just because I like the way it looks. You can use whatever you like. Just make sure it contrasts well with whatever you've used for your walls. So I've got nether brick stairs and I'm just running them all the way along. Take them out one at the end, do the next row the same and the next. Do the same on the other side. One upside down stair at the end and then top off the whole row with matching slabs. Once your roof's completely done, come back to the end and upside down stairs just to make that end look a bit neater. Now you can leave the roof like that or you can put chimneys in. If you want to put chimneys in, come to the top, line it up with the beginning of your second terrace from the left end, knock out the slab and the two stairs one, two, three with brick, another row on top and another row on top of that and finish it off with three chimney pots. Come to the beginning of your fourth house in the row, one, two, three, four and repeat the same thing. And come to the start of your last house in the row and do the same thing again. There you are, chimneys. And the idea is that each pair of houses shares the same chimney. Okay, and round to the back, roofs for the laundry. I'm just using nether brick slabs. They're bottom half, so they will be completely spawn proof. Just cover the tops of all the laundries. Now you can either put an upside down stair like you did at the front or you can put a block to match whatever the wall is. Whatever you prefer you can even mix and match if you want. Now take out this bottom block and place a slab or a block. Now we're going to mark out windows and doors then we'll get on to the interior. So working from the left hand end. This first gap, a right way upstairs. I'm using stone brick because I like the contrast and it doesn't end up blending too much with any of the materials that I've used. In this next one, an upside down stone brick stair at the top, upside down stair, right way upstairs. So we'll have windows either side and two doors that are next to each other. We're going to repeat that all the way down. So alternating pairs of bottom stairs and upper stairs. These ones with the upper stairs are doorways. In each of the doorways we're going to put a stone brick slab or you could put a stone brick block. I just like the slab because slabs go further. Let's get started on the internal walls. I've got a variety of woods. I've got birch, spruce and jungle. You can use all the same woods if you like or you can use a mixture. I like to use a mixture just because I can. Now this first little house here, here is going to be narrower than all the others. So come across one, two, three and on the fourth put a row of your chosen wood. And now build the wall up. You can go up to the first stair if you want or you can go all the way up into the top of the roof. It doesn't make any difference. That's wall number one. 
Now this little area here with the cobble right. showing, one, two, and fill it in with wood to match this wall. This next house is one block wider, so one, two, three, four, and on this fifth, we're going to make a wall just like we did next door. And here we've got the stone showing again, so one, two, and fill it in. Don't worry about this. The next one's going to be done the same as this one, so we come across one, two, three, four, and on the fifth, a wall. I'm using jungle this time just for something different. And again where we've got this wall showing, two rows of three blocks. Coming into the next one, one, two, three, four. I'm using spruce on the fifth. And this last wall is jungle. One, two, three, four, five. Now that all the internal walls are done, I'm going to do the floors. I'm going to make all the floors exactly the same. So take up the whole floor to this wall. Fill it in with oak. You can use planks. I'm using slabs because, as I said, slabs go further. The little laundry area. Take out the four for that. And I'm using stone brick slabs here because I don't want to use cobble it'll end up being too much and while we're here we're going to line the inside of the laundry roof with slabs to match whatever this wall is so we come in here we do the same take out the floor to be level with that wall replace it all with oak or the wood of your choice And now I'm going to do this laundry floor in cobble. And again, line the laundry ceiling with slabs to match whatever this wood is. Repeat this process with the rest of the houses. Now with our internal walls and our floors done, we need to be able to get up to do the next floor. So you need stairs. You can use a contrasting stair if you want. I'm actually going to use oak so it tones in with the floor. So come in the front door of your terrace, leave a one block and place down a stair. And then put stairs going all the way up till you reach this gap. Now we're going to fill in the rest of the floor with planks, not with slabs, with planks but leave above the stairs empty. This last one here, fill with a slab to match your floor. And now in each of these gaps, we're gonna put a right way up stair, facing outwards. Ceiling next, I'm using birch. Uh, make sure you put one on top of your wall. If you haven't taken the wall all the way up to the top, that just spawn proofs it. The ceiling goes level with the top of the windows. Bottom half slab automatically spawn proofed. Let's go next door. This is slightly different. We're not going to put the stair here in the middle of the room. Instead, we're going to put it against this wall. It's still the wall closest to the door. And again, we come all the way up. Fill in the rest of the floor with planks, leaving above the stairs open. And on this one, a slab. Finish your window frames. Spawn proof the top of your wall. You can use a matching slab if you like, or just whatever you've got to hand. And then put your ceiling in. And we're going to do that all the way down. The third house has the stairs right in front of the door. The fourth house has them just to the left of the door. The fifth has it right in front of the door. And the sixth has it just to the left of the door. And when fixing your window frames, don't forget any windows that are at the end walls. Now to add doors and glass panes. The front doors I like to use dark oak. Whichever door you use though, make sure that the hinge is against the wall the door is closest to. So 
So you can see that these two are a mirror image. And I'm using light grey stained glass because I want the windows to look a bit dirty and grimy. And on the back door, I'm putting a spruce door. And the hinge goes closest to this one block wall, not the two. So on this laundry, it'll be there. If you've decided to put a block above, you might want to put the door further forward. Windows and doors in, all that remains is to light up each of these houses and decorate them. Now, three cheers for lanterns. The space under the stairs, you could put upside down stairs here, but I like to use them for some cooking things and some workstations. I put the loom in sideways so it looks like drawers. Got a crafting table and a chest. And in the back here, two cauldrons for laundry tubs. This arrangement with the loom, the chest and the laundry tubs can actually be really handy for making banners. Now let's put a little table in. I've just got some scaffolding and I've got some stairs for chairs. I'm just going to put some waste blocks there because I've got a painting to go on the wall. Upstairs there isn't a lot of room. Pop a bed in. Probably better to make that brightly coloured. <laughs> Put a chest in and maybe another painting. And that's it. All the others are going to be just variations on that. Oh yeah, and if you don't want the constant squeaking of bats, you might want to stick a torch or a lantern up in the ceiling. You may need some extra light in the laundry. A torch should do the trick. And that's the houses themselves done. Now you might want to come around the back and make some gardens. I'll show you the arrangement that I had on Alpha Craft. You can of course divide these however you want. I made mine out of cobble wall and cobble blocks. So two wall and then blocks. Leave a gap and blocks. Come over to this little gap and one, two and bring the wall all the way around. Cobble blocks next to it and on the other side. Basically we're going to leave a gateway directly in front of each door and we're going to have blocks either side of that gateway. And then I just divide up the gardens. We run cobble walls between all the blocks. Because this garden is so small, we're going to put the wall there so we have a little garden of three. This one again is built just the other side of this gap. This is a little garden of three. And this one is the other side of the gap, leaving us with a final tiny garden of two. Again stone brick slabs in each of the gateways and the gates which are basically spruce doors are placed from the inside and they open the same way that the back door opens. So the hinges are always on the same side for the gate and the back door. That's the back gardens and of course you can decorate those any way you want. And there's lots of things that you can do with gardens. If we have a look at the ones that I did on Alpha Craft, some of those little recesses I've turned into greenhouses or writing sheds or potting sheds. Some of them have got vegetables or flowers growing in them. Others have got weeds or are just gravel and neglected. I've also lined the houses up to make alleyways and hung washing in the alleyway with fence washing lines and white banners representing the washing on the line. 
And of course you don't have to build a row of terraces at six houses long. You can build them two, have them as a duplex. Three, four, 15, 20, 100, doesn't make any difference. There are two different ways that you can extend these. You can just keep adding houses at the end and for as long as you want. Or you can add terrace houses in sets. So we have an initial set of six. We can add another set of six. If you're doing that, if you're adding sets, add the sets at the end that has the narrow room and make it so that there is a one block gap between this set and the set you're adding. Here's our second set of six. Now if we come here you can see it's now a little alleyway and I have left out the upstairs stone wall. That's because we are going to replace it with a wooden one and if we come next door we're going to take out this wall altogether just on the top floor and we're going to take out the next row we're going to replace that with oak for our floor we're going to do the same again and this room has gone from being a tiny room to suddenly being very large let's put a second bed in now because it's this part of the terrace that has extended, we're going to replace this wall with cobble. We're going to knock out those two upside down stairs, that bit of wall, and complete the ceiling in birch. There we are, much bigger room up here. We're going to cover the oak here with cobble to match the rest of the terrace. Do the same at the back. And now I'm going to line this little alleyway with brick slabs just to hide that oak. And you can just keep doing that all the way along. This creates a little alley that can go through to a back lane if you've got one or to access the other gardens these houses don't have to be built on the flat. Here they are marching up a hill. It's actually quite easy to get them going up or down the terrain. Steep slopes might be a challenge but with something like this it really wasn't that difficult to just make each house one block higher. Here you can see I had to just bring this wall down one just to accommodate the terrain. But it is a really versatile style for moulding the houses to the terrain. They don't have to be made grey and drab. You could make them all the one colour if you wanted or you could go with something a bit more bright and vibrant. Here I've made the six houses in different colours of concrete and terracotta and yes I've included white concrete. And don't forget that diorite is a really good texture block for white concrete. I've also swapped out the doors for oak doors that have got a little window in them. This has a much more warm climate feel to it, maybe a hint of the Caribbean. And because it's for a warmer climate, I have added this veranda and balcony and of course an awning over the top just to do that little bit extra for keeping the sun off. There's lots of things you can do with these houses, lots of different ways that you can play with them. I'd love to see what you do. Maybe you can join my Discord and share your builds and show me what you've been doing with the terrace houses. If you want some more of my builds or some more of my videos, there's end cards on the screen now. And I'll see you next time. Bye!